It has to be God. Hello, people. Sup, my we my wieners. Yeah, so, um, do do not gonna lie, I had an extremely busy day today. <laughs> Everyone does. Yeah, it's like, I had plans about, like, doing setup for basically, like, uh, for the fucking tournament today, but, yeah, that, that, that basically changed fairly quickly. <laughs> um, I was incapable of starting to work, and the, the players basically came out for this, like, somewhere around, like, 5 o'clock. Then I had to basically leave during, a, like, somewhere around, like, 6.30, because... Uh, Annie's car broke down. So I wasn't capable of getting anything done. But but the but the players did manage to actually like get get stuff done. So yeah, f thank you guys. Uh, yes, we got we got we got the whole, we got the entire bloody uh Yes, we will have the entire entire thing set up. Set up and ready. Wait for when you for when you do the level when you do for when we for when you for when you put in the all, all the level one weapons. The level one league. The level one league. Is this a big le le level one weapon tournament? Le uh, the level one le league weapon tournament. Who cares, because it's the level one league. The only thing that matters is everything's level one. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Do do do. So, this is me basically saying, fuck it, I'm not going to wait another week to basically do this. We're going to basically, like, continue this off tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not going to put this off for a week. We're going to basically do this as attended tomorrow. Do <laughs> do. Yep. Oh, I forgot who the fuck is part of Okay, I remember Tonto Tonto being the part of that team. What the fuck else was it? I can do Tonto Tonto right now. I'm looking at him right now. Tonto, 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 Sorry about that phone call. It's all right. All of these phone calls. They're my kryptonite. I go more and more crazy every time I get a phone call. <laughs> Do 
And that's why I killed him, officer. Because he wouldn't stop calling my phone. So you killed a person just because they kept calling you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pack it up, boys. Pack it up, boys. We're going home. He admitted to it, but we can just leave now. <laughs> Uh, sir, shouldn't we arrest him? Eh, <laughs> not our problem. God damn! You know, I could actually see that happening, and and not because, and not not inside our actual government, but it's like I can actually see that happening with inside that like fucking. Code Geass RP that me and my friends did back in the day. <laughs> oh, damn. The law enforcement inside that series was fucking terrible. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. Well, uh, is it? I mean, I don't. I mean, personally, I don't think they won. Uh, the law enforcement and and code in the action in the uh, code Geass anyway was that was that good it, was that good either? Well, no, they were good at basically enforcing the rules that they were supposed to. It's just that the rules that they were enforcing were terrible. <laughs> and also more and also more or less, uh, some of the cops usually would do would would probably get uh, manipulated. Okay, my good job. Thank thanks to Lelouch. I still remember the fact of what of what of, of when a of what, when the cops pulled pulled up on uh on Mr. Mine Reader got Mr. Mine Reader go and go like <laughs> lit him up. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, the law enforcement inside the uh, fucking Code Geass is the equivalent of basically a bunch of, like, hicks with guns. <laughs> just shoot qu uh, just shoot first and ask questions never. <laughs> and just shoot them, they're probably guilty of something. <laughs> But wait, well, they, mm -hmm. but wait, but wait, but wait, they look on, but wait, they don't look like they're dangerous. Stop, George, you're thinking too much. <laughs> they don't pay us to think, they pay us to shoot shit. <laughs> ah, you're right. Thinking's hard anyway. <laughs> it's... it's like, we, we have to use our brains. <laughs> it isn't that strange. <laughs> God damn it. What I just said actually hits even harder for basically me and my friends are. <laughs> like, if I'm talking about the rebellion side of things. We have to use our brains, and that's hard. Let's just go in, guns blazing, and never think at all. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't do well. Ah, uh, how did that all end for them again? Hmm, let me see. Dead, dead, paralyzed, s now a bartender. <laughs> oh, and that paralyzed person? Hmm. Kind of went off the shit. It's like it makes me question, did Lexi's character really even care about any of the bullshit she was spouting? 
about peace, liberty, being able to live together as one. Also, let's kill everyone! <laughs> We'll show them how peaceful we are by murdering the shit out of them. <laughs> we'll show them that, that we're, we're not murderers by murdering our own people. <laughs> Good politicians. Great politicians we have here. Great. Yeah. But yeah, people, we have very few characters left in terms of me basically giving their backstories and everything. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. Do do do. Yeah, it is. Who knows? Maybe I'll even make Monday sessions now I just talk about backstories again. Then again, that would not be a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, I, get, I mean, you put something on Mondays. Put something on Mondays. Do, do, do. And, and basically, a lot of my players here love lore. Lore. <laughs> Oh, yes, the perfect ele 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 elemental infinity for Tonto Tonto. Tonto Tonto. <laughs> hey, it's the only element that makes sense for him. <laughs> You know what? I'll put I'll put that in Tonto Tonto's little sheet. So I'm gonna write something different. So I'm gonna put something different for good old Tonto Tension, <laughs> if he has any. Yeah. He does. He do He does have infinities. So I just don't remember what they are. <laughs> Me just being a hundred percent honest, dudes. I wrote them down in my Google Docs. Ah yes, Tonto Tonto's almighty magic of one. Do do do. Tonto Tonto is the Tonto is the Tontos. The Tonto is the all Tontos. <laughs> yeah. I swear, if Wombat Chan is actually doing the cow is doing the cow. Couch of how many times how many times Tonto said said the Tonto Tonto. I'm gonna I'm gonna strangle him. <laughs> oh, you've done that a long time ago. Oh my word. I mean, he might need to update the list because Tonto Tonto's made more appearances since then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm. 
burgers. Unfortunately for Tonto, he only gets one. He only gets one accessory. He only gets one accessory, one relic, and one artifact. Poor Tonto, Tonto. Tonto, Tonto does not care about silly trinkets. <laughs> Tonto Tonto only cares about one thing, and that's bluegrass music. <laughs> he gets out of banjo. <laughs> Adler, I actually want that to happen now because there's a joke level one sword called the banjo. <laughs> I want that to now happen. Give him the banjo. Banjo and Kazooie. It's. A stale piece of bread. <laughs> does any does, does anyone remember the whole fact of of that of that moldy of that moldy of that moldy bread that Sport always had? <laughs> it's still in his inventory. <laughs> It's still in there. It's, uh, it's been in there since the first session. <laughs> Some people basically ask the question, like, why does he still have the moldy piece of bread? What if he lost it when he basically, like, changed his clothing at, like, Quarry? Apparently, it's just always with him. <laughs> Or Ford, for some reason, decide to just pocket the moldy bread? <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna use this someday. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's stinking, it, it's probably stinking up that pocket to no end. <laughs> it's now gonna be stale moldy bread. <laughs> I know it should be stale by now, like a long time ago, actually. <laughs> It's probably hard as a rock by now. <laughs> uh, 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 look at them dance. They're shifting. And now Tonto Tonto's bigger. The same with Rufus. And Luna's bigger. And they're bigger. And then she's bigger. And then these guys appear out of nowhere. <laughs> ah, yes. Also, also, basically, uh, the soberest flags are here. Do the shoot. Really? <laughs> oh, thank like, you. So I don't want people to see. I don't want to. See, I don't want anyone to see our flags. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, they're really bad. <laughs> Honestly, I thought we burned them on the stake. But yes, before we get into the backstories, but let's go ahead and do ourselves a quick little thing. Quick little thing, you say? A quick little thing.
let us use our lettuce powers and eat the opposition. The opposition shall be devoured. There will be no resistance. The resistance is futile because we have eaten you. As we now go over to another location. As we have the schnickledoodles. The schnickledoodles? Hmm. Hmm. Ha. Ah. To think this thing this place is still oh around here after all those years. Very strange. Hmm. So you're telling so you're telling Drabin that the fact that this used to be Irina back in the day. Yes, yes, uh that that's what I was saying. Well, why hasn't Robin heard about this arena? If, if Robin never heard of it, then it must not be important. Hmm. Well, I better say there, girl. Uh, to think that we had something like this inside, inside basically the kingdoms. A little bit strange, girl. Hmm. I mean, according, well, according to basically history, they used to have themselves like fights here as entertainment for the people. Wait, people used to fight for entertainment purposes. That sounds awesome! <laughs> ah, makes me basically think back to that tournament back in Quarry. Bit of a shame that it got in it, uh, ended up getting interrupted by Dragonfucker. Hey, don't speak about basically uh, our king, our king, kingdom's leaders, future leaders like that. No, I wasn't talking about them, Dragonfuckers. I'm talking about the Dragonfucker, Dragonfucker. Who? <laughs> Oh, wait, I don't think you basically saw him. Uh, basically, very tall, lanky guy. Looks like that he has hard on when you say the word dragon. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I actually think that they mentioned him to me. Hmm. <laughs> well, girl. Yeah, I'll say, that's... Actually, that, that, that's just fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I don't have a clever quip for this one. <laughs> <laughs> no one does. No one boy would. Huh. Hmm. Well, I guess we should go ahead and tell the royals that's still here after all these years. They probably would want to know. Uh, honestly, Robin is a little bit upset at the fact that that tournament ended up getting cancelled and everything because of Dragonfucker. 
I mean, I mean, Robin would have, of course, won. <sighs> hey, hey, wait a second. Hold up there. Hold up there, partner. I don't think you would have won. Of course Robin would have won. Who could basically be able to stand up to Robin? Um, I can name at least 20 people on the top of my head. Oh yeah, go ahead and name them. Hmm, let me see. Uh, the Mozartian King, the, Odi the Odian Queen, uh, basically, uh, let, let me see. O also the Lokian King, the Forian King. Hey, don't, they don't count! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the Odian army, they don't count! <laughs> the Odian princes, they don't count either. <laughs> What about D? I am not weaker than D. I do not care what any of you people say. He is not stronger than Robin. <laughs> I mean, he definitely did more inside that fight against Char than you did. Oh, what? No, 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 no. You're not going to disrespect Robin like this. <laughs> All right there. I think I know what we're going to do there, gentlemen, if I all have your attention. Marcus is like, you don't have my attention. Money, you have my attention. <laughs> I think that we should go ahead and rally the rest of army and everything, so we can be able to have tournament and stuff. A tournament between just us. And, and, may, and maybe some of the professors, if they're interested. And also, let's invite the Lannisters, because we need punching bags. Stuart's like, I'm on board with this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I especially like the last part. You know what? I think I'm going to invite Lancelot first. <laughs> Robin over here. Perfect! <laughs> I do not know who that guy is, but I like that idea. Later that day, do to do. All right, everyone. I think I basically came up with a good cover-up story. <laughs> Let's see if basically the royal the royals will buy it. <laughs> Usually, Robin does not come up with the plans. He just follows them. <laughs> Over elsewhere. Hmm. Oh, fuck. Do do do. There we go. <laughs> ah, yes, here we are. Hot, so. Hmm. Do you ever get the feeling that we're kind of stuck in some sort of strange time loop that doesn't go anywhere. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I wonder how long the series is going to basically be, be put in this inside this like uh, never ending like uh, pool of state. What the fuck? Why are there two stewards? <laughs> oh, I used my shadow clone no jutsu. I learned that when we were in Gwari. <laughs> Hmm. 
Fair enough. Apparently it utilizes dark magic, so yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, what brings you here today? Well, you see there, princes. Robin basically thought of interesting idea. Oh? Oh? One thing, one thing we managed to confirm. The arena from basically, uh, from basically about, um, how long was it? 20, 25 years ago? Hmm. You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's like nobody really gave us any specific time, so we're just assuming that's like twenty it was like twenty to twenty-five years. Wait, 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 you're talking about that? Wait, 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 are you talking about that arena? you talking about the arena when we went back in time? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, according to Stuart. Yes, I can confirm that we did found it. Huh. It's still, and it's still up. Not only that, but in pristine condition. <laughs> yes, Robin thought of good idea. Um, sort of basically like a nice little training exercise with a little bit of extra flair. I mean, remember how that there was that tournament back in Quarry and everything that got interrupted by Dragonfucker? Yes, yes, I... Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Dally, I don't remember you sounding this depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I, yes, I remember. He just doesn't like being reminded of that guy. He pats Galleon on the shoulder. I'm pretty sure that Draco just used his normal speaking voice for Galleon. <laughs> I know. I'm just going with the joke. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, well, honestly, Draco hasn't played Galleon in a while, so I don't fucking remember how he how how I have him speak. <laughs> yeah. A lot of your characters just use your normal speaking voice. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, but they but they at least have some, have their. I can't even say vague differences. They they really do just kind of sound alike. <laughs> uh, Hor Horatio is like is just Drago voice, but excitable. <laughs> But I guess, but I guess, I guess the only real difference that you could probably tell in, in between the characters is just the tone. <laughs> yeah, do do do. It's like, it's like with, it's like, it's like with good old Gregor. I have this gentleman, gentlemanly tone. And hard to let go. I haven't made a country. I don't think I made a country character yet, but hey, it'll come. It'll probably come sometime. Maybe when I make a cobalt. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Do do do. Yeah. Also, be a. It also will probably be a matter of time of when I make of, of when I when it, when there's a possibility of me making a Zara. But yeah, yes, I have, to, have, have, to, have, have to make one at some point. It's gotta collect the <laughs> <Yeah>. set. <laughs> yeah.
господи. Yes. Dropping the booty to be entertaining idea is a restraining exercise in way to basically maybe like a basically help entertain public in currently bad times. We could have tournaments and stuff. Well, uh, well, I guess, I guess if any, I guess if everyone else is all is all right with the idea. Okay, Robin, what's your alternative motive? What? Why would you? Why, why would you say that? <laughs> I mean, you probably wouldn't. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you probably wouldn't bring bring up the whole tournament thing if you didn't have an alternative motive. <laughs> Well, actually, to be fair, Galleon, I mean, if he wouldn't bring up the tournament thing, then what the fuck would he even basically say in that point? Like, why else would we use an arena? I don't know, we have a picnic on it? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Robin also wants to know who would have actually won that tournament out of all of us. I mean, please, don't don't say that you're not even the tiniest bit curious. <laughs> it's like Maureen's like, damn it, I am curious. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, when you say it like that, I, it, 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 yeah, I am. I was a little bit curious. I mean, hey, we need, we basically need training anyway, and what's a better way to train than basically fighting each other? <laughs> I mean, I believe that we all don't want basically a repeat with like a fucking demon puncher guy. <laughs> Um, I have no response to that because I wasn't there. Uh, yeah, I wasn't there either. Um, uh, neither was I there. Um, what the fuck? What does he mean by demon fucking puncher guy? They was like... I don't, I don't know who this guy is, but he sounds awesome. I want to fight him. <laughs> well, to put it simply, he's a demon. A physically strong one. I was still standing after Dean after Dean punch, punched it. Wait, Dean punched something and it didn't immediately go flying back into the horizon. Yes, that, that is what that is exactly what I'm saying. Yes, um, I was there to witness it, and the thing fucking karate chopped Alexander out of his armor and onto a fucking roof. <laughs> what the fuck? Um... 
Oh, so he's the person that basically obliterated Alexander's armor. You know, I asked him what happened, and he didn't say anything. <laughs> huh. I think Alexander might have been basically secretly ashamed that the unbreakable wall was broken so easily. <laughs> Wait a second, but I managed to survive a couple of hits from it. <laughs> that means I'm stronger than Alexander! <laughs> <laughs> that, that moment when fucking Robin actually came to the conclusion. <laughs> you know, that's actually the part of like, the most saddest truth right there. I'm back. Well, 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 actually, well, actually, then again, well, actually, then again, well, actually, then again, Robin did kind of get, get, Robin did kind of, Robin did get, get like, f fucking, bump, fucking, uh, fl flung into a, into a light post. I mean, at least he wasn't TKO'd by a single karate chop. <laughs> And some people may say critical hits, but at the same time, it's not like critical exi it's exist in the, uh, exist in the, like, in-universe. <laughs> honestly, honestly, when, honestly, when it comes to the critical hits we do, when it, when it comes to the critical hits we, we, either we, either we or the enemy makes, we just do, we just add some flair to it. <laughs> Honestly, the way that basically my my dad always explained it was a critical hit in universe means the character goes try hard mode. <laughs> they put their back into it. Okay, if there's a person that can be able to, like, fucking basically decimate Alexander so easily, then, yeah, we really do need some training. No joke. Hello, everyone. I returned... Huh? As a good old friend comes in. Good old Fujin. The Fujin? Ah, yes, it's the Fujin. I did research on that char person that you mentioned. And yes, I did actually manage to find something on him. <laughs> Yes, Char. Um, basically, he it seems that basically he was a demon known throughout legend for basically his immense amount of strength. Though he's also known for being extremely dumb. Back inside, basically, the uh, basically times of where basically people from Optima were first settling down here. Char was basically sort of like the undisputed conqueror of the land, along with his generals. However, it seems that basically that his generals were then basically destroyed, extinguished, killed by your ancestors. At that time, he was number one of, of Hell's army. Wait, so he got weaker over time? Because he told us that he was number 20, that he was number 20. Oh no, he didn't get weaker, he got stronger. Wait, Wait what? what? Uh, Robin's confused. Isn't higher number mean you stronger? 
Well, apparently in Hell's Army, it's actually the reverse. <laughs> Basically, the lower lower num the lower you your number is, the weaker you are. Wait, um, he said he was number 20 out of 100. There's any demon stronger than that guy? Okay, then. So, yeah, that tournament really sounds like a nice idea. <laughs> Oh yeah, it really does. Oh yeah, it really does. It looks as basically like a fucking current way, like, for the first time that, like, Galleon has ever seen, like, fucking, uh, basically Robin is as white pale as a ghost right now. <laughs> Oh, also, also, Robin was going to, Robin was going to have Royals basically be a part of own team, Royal, Royal families just for representation for all that shit. Was going to invite basically professors, uh, you know, for basically propaganda reasons, and then I was going to invite the Lannisters because we need laugh. <laughs> Hmm, I'm on board with this idea. I'm fine with it. Alright, seems like that everything's all set up, but let's go ahead and do shit. <laughs> All right, guys, time for you to fight your first challenge. <laughs> time to die, bitch. Okay. <laughs> But yes, as we're now inside the story time corner. Been a while since we've been here. Yes, the good old story time corner. As we have a couple more stories to go. <laughs> But yes, here with inside the story time corner, we have ourselves some interesting stories to be told. And after leaving it to a straw poll, it seems that people really do want me to talk about Hodoru's uh, backstory on screen. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to get fucking gr gruesome. At least from what I remember, from what I was told. Uh, again, people, for, for what I'm about to say, it's like, when I get to Hoder's backstory, it's like, if you're sensitive to basically, like, uh, certain things and stuff, and, like, uh, have basically trauma with, like, abuse and stuff, I, I would recommend just skipping, skipping hers. 
because her hers gets honestly very dark. Viewers distri- viewers discretion is advised. So I guess in a way, I guess in a way, I think uh, Sun Wu is probably going to be somewhat in there, but probably not as well. Oh, did I forget to put down Sun Wu? Oh, fuck! What am I fucking talking about? I think I just confused myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so Sun Wu's not a big part of her backstory; just more so a footnote. Ba- basically, it's just sort of like. This is basically Hodoru's perspective of things, and then when I do basically Sun Wu's backstory, I'll basically do his perspective of the events. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm pretty sure that Sun Wu was only mentioned like once or twice with Insider backstory. Do do. Mm-hmm. Um, as it comes down to other characters, um. Well, you see, people, there's also quite a couple of characters from the other kingdoms. Um, actually, not really that much. It's like, um, I'm pretty sure I did Roy's. I know, I know I've done, I know I've done Stewart's. I don't remember if I done Susan's. I, I'm going to be honest there. I don't remember if I did Melinda. Um... I know for a fact I did both Blair and Randolph. I know for a double fact that I've done Fergus. I'm pretty yeah, sure I did. Because, do, I'm sure. Lucky, because he was born under an unlucky star. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I haven't done Edna's, and I know for a fact I haven't done Chins or Hoshi's. Um. I think I did basically Blanche. I think I did the toggles. I might actually have to look back on that one. Because I'm not 100% sure, honestly. And when it comes down to Scorpio, I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I haven't done most of Scorpios. <laughs> honestly, the only one I remember doing is uh, Sylvester's. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's there's quite a couple characters that I have to basically still do. Do do do. I mean, Neo's characters are all done, so there's no more no more interesting tidbits to get about Neo's. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, who who all was on Team uh, Hopeful Rebels? Oh, who is on Team Hopeful Rebels? Do do. I'll just go ahead and copy paste real quick. Do do. And then I'll I'll just I'll just basically DM it to you. Okay. Just gonna honestly, go to the G. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because honestly, that's too much. Because that, honestly, I think that's pretty much like the only team that needs to be di- that needs to be at least d- done for for at least uh for at least one, two, four. Yeah, it's like I already did took care of basically the professors like in advance, so they're fine. Do do. Yeah. Here you go. Damn it to you. Oh, okay. It was, it was fail. Okay. No, I was forgetting someone. Ah, okay. Do the do. I think the way I'm going to handle this is basically I'm going to do, like, one Ares unit, one Pisces unit, one leftover Ophicene unit, and then and then basically, like, so on and so forth. One Scorpio, too. Yeah. Do-do-do. 
Mm-hmm. Ah, hey, that means we get to basically like go ahead and uh, Neo can basically add shit to the backstory playlist again. Yay! Yay! Yay. But yes, as do do do. Yes. Now, people, it is time for us to go ahead and do the backstory of Tonto Tonto. Because we need something a little bit more lighthearted before we dive into Hoda Tonto Tonto grew up with inside a small village, with inside the land of Dino. Tonto had himself a small but loving family. His father, his mother, his grandma, and his younger sister. Tonto Tonto, I mean Tonto, uh, <laughs> this is going to mix me up, but yeah, um, Tonto grew up with not really any expectations put on him, nothing that his parents really expected from him, or wanted from him, they just wanted him to live a happy life, but Tonto, when he was young, always felt like that he could do more. Just because he grew up in a small village doesn't mean he couldn't rise and do something great. Tonto Tonto, I mean Tonto, had, had himself a great belief that he was destined for something great. People with inside his v small village always complimented him on his talents, his skills, as he was indeed a very intelligent child. Smarter than most of the teachers that were inside his own village, as he was capable of basically learning anything that they would teach him with inside a very quick amount of time. When Tonto was very young, he would sometimes basically write numbers in the snow for hours on end just to keep himself occupied.
However, there was one thing when it came down to Tonto. It seems that he suffered from a strange illness that made it so that his body was <coughs> very fragile. The muscles and bones with inside his body were very thin, his bones being very brittle, as well as his muscles being very flat. He was not a very strong boy. It was due to this that Tonto's parents worried for him. If he were to ever basically be attacked by a wild animal or bandits, he wouldn't be capable of defending himself. It was at that moment an elder of the village that Tonto grew up in came up and offered to teach the boy magic. The village elder taught Tonto how to utilize talismans as well as scrolls. This allowed Tonto in order to basically fight back if he needed so. But even though he was taught this way, he was more so interested in learning about how to use his magic to help people instead. Support them. Heal them. After a couple of years passed, Tonto decided that he wanted to explore the outside world. He didn't want to be restricted to his small town, small village. He wanted to go out inside the bigger world. So, Tonto said goodbye to his parents, his younger sister and grandma, and the rest of the people in his village. He then went off to lands unknown. As a couple weeks afterwards, he managed to basically stroke a deal with the people of a caravan that was, go that was leaving Zeno and heading over to Quarry. The caravan company agreed to allow Tonto to journey with them if Tonto would, would basically help out around, around the caravan. Make sure that basically all of the artifacts in the back are perfectly okay. And none of them, and none of them roll around and get broken. Tonto did this job very diligently making sure that every artifact or relic was inside the back of the caravan was all perfectly neat and didn't fall anywhere. Some of the people of the caravan even thought that Tonto was very OCD because it seems that he really liked organizing everything, even though that people didn't told him to. But they weren't exactly complaining.
it's at this moment that Tonto did in fact basically found something that didn't really match all of the other artifacts or anything. That being a mask. The mask didn't really look like anything. It just had two eye holes, as well as basically a strange symbol painted on the top, and nothing else. Tonto just set it down somewhere. Not really basically too worried about it, as it seemed like the caravan people didn't really care much for it anyway. They were honestly planning on flooring it out. Then the caravan leader said, Actually, you know what? You can have it if you want it. Tonto wasn't sure why, but he really liked the thing for some reason. Something about it just felt odd to him, but in a good way. During that night, Tonto was very tired, but for some reason he couldn't go to sleep. As he kind of just looks at the mask that he has now obtained, kind of just staring at it, wondering what its origins are. What is that weird symbol on the top of its head? What is the language that's inscribed in? These things just kept on basically keeping Tonto up, as if there was one thing he always never liked, was things going unexplained. It was at that point that Tonto basically heard something, a scream, as he then poked his head outside the caravan. A bunch of bandits were attacking the, the caravan group as Tonto hit back with inside the caravan cart, looking for basically his talismans, but he wasn't sure where they were. Then he remembered. He accidentally gave them to the people of the caravan, mistaking their bags. Tonto, Tonto, uh, Tonto then, then looked around, desperately trying to find something to defend himself with, but he couldn't find any tones, not any scrolls. No talismans lying around. All he could find were basically two rugged katanas that were just lying around. Wasn't really sure what, what it was about them. But something was better than nothing. As Tonto Dan came out, the bandits basically surrounded him very quickly as he tried to fight back, but the bandits very easily overpowered him as the bandit leader then gloated in front of him, calling him a weakling, not being able to defend himself. The bandits made a bunch of rude comments about him, about basically his illness him being poor, mocking and ridiculing him. The bandit captain then basically proclaimed that killing him would honestly be a mercy. So let's just throw him off the nearest cliff instead. He'll probably suffer a long excruciating death if we did that. It 
was at that point that Tonto looked over at the mask while he was bleeding on the ground. The bandit captain's sword currently basically pinning him down by the shoulder as they were currently laughing and gloating. Living up the living up basically the high of the situation. He tried to reach for the mask, trying to get something to basically hit him with. The bandit captain then noticed this and decided to basically play a little bit of a joke, because why not? He took basically the mask from off the ground and put and then basically put it on basically Tonto's face, saying, at least I don't have to look at your ugly mug before you die. Honestly, you should thank me. It was at that moment that Tonto stopped breathing. The bandits were shocked because he shouldn't have died that quickly. Doesn't look like he lost enough blood to bleed out. And he just stopped breathing, which was very weird. Then the pirate captain, then that pirate captain, <laughs> fuck. Uh, the bandit leader then basically said, Hmm? Why does his chest feel harder? Captain, look! His arms! They're bulging! His chest, it's getting chiseled! His legs are pretty damn fun. I mean, they're getting more muscular! <laughs> As Tonto grabbed the, pan the bandit leader's leg and started crushing it as its grip, his grip strength alone was basically enough to basically break his ankle. Ah! Ah! Tonto then took basically the sword that was currently pinning him to the ground and ripped it out. The moment that he did, the pirates basically noticed that the wounds that they inflicted onto basically Tonto were now gone. It was at that moment that the mask said one thing, and one thing only. So, your spirit animal is bore. All right, then. Tonto Tonto will do this. As the mask in front of the pirate, the, the bandit's eyes transformed, becoming less wooden looking and more bestial, as it then resembled a boar head. As Tonto, no. Tonto Tonto began to become more and more muscular to the point of where it was putting most of the bandits' muscles to shame. The bandits then ran towards Tan Tonto Tonto, but Tonto Tonto managed to fight them off rather easily, grabbing their own weapons and using them against them breaking whatever swords, axes, or lance or spears they tried to use against him. Tonto Tonto then grabbed the two katanas that were on the ground that Tonto tried to use earlier. Tonto then basically took both of the katanas and hit them against a tree, causing basically the katanas to sort of like break a bit, but not fully. 
them now having a very serrated and jagged appearance. Mm. These are now Tonto Tonto's things. Tonto Tonto is hungry. Time for Tonto Tonto to feed! As Tonto then ran at the bandits, slashing them, slicing them, drawing out their blood. By the time the, di the morning sun arisen, the entire caravan was covered in nothing but blood. Tonto Tonto, completely soaked, head to toe. The bandit leader, the bandits, all of them. Completely eviscerated. So, you going to a place called Quarry? Tonto Tonto find this interesting. Hmm. Tonto Tonto was supposed to go to Quarry. So Tonto Tonto will go. Hmm. Seems that weak boy has suffered lots of injuries. If Tonto Tonto will have him gain back control, he probably die. Tonto Tonto will remain in control till we get to Quarry. Then he can have control again. Hmm. Do not worry now, frail boy. You now have warrior outside. And his name, Tonto Tonto. As Tonto Tonto then walked and walked and walked, not needing food, not needing sleep, not needing rest, he kept walking and walking and walking until he made it to quarry. And that's the story of Tonto Tonto. Huh. To think, to think that, to think that boy, to think that boy mask was just, was nothing but a but but a but a wooden thing. Before. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. But basically, it's like to point out basically a line that basically Stewart said, like when you guys first met Tonto Tonto. It's like, when he put on the mask, he said it smelled like wood. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Small detail, easy to miss, but yeah. Yeah, Tonto Tonto, basically, he's kind of like one of the biggest exceptions that I've seen, because it's like... Most characters that ended up joining near the end of the first run didn't really get that much attention or they weren't really that relevant because they were so new. But Tonto Tonto was the exception to that. It's like Tonto Tonto had some has a very weird aura of him. Yeah, it's like 
despite Tonto Tonto not doing as much as basically the other people with inside the army, he, he's collected himself quite a bu bunch of fans and stuff. As well as been basically inside some very notable fights. Do do do. I mean, sure. His most recent. I mean, his most recent one against Char. He basically kind of got himself like. Uh, he got himself fucking like insta gibbed pretty hard. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Tonto Tonto. It's like Tonto Tonto. The, uh... Is is like the is like the spirit of the mass be like uh, the spirit of the spirit of, I I guess a spirit I guess a spirit I I don't really know with the mass. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna straight up confirm it. The mask is 100% cursed. <laughs> oh, okay. The mask has its own sentience. It just, it just, it just gave itself the name Tonto Tonto because he, it basically the mask knew what Tonto's name was the moment that the mask was put on, so he just decided to basically just call himself Tonto Tonto. It's like yeah. the actual name of the mask is known as mask is known as the Mask of the Beast. It's like I will confirm now. Basically, if he, if basically if like uh, if Tonto Tension had a different spirit animal, basically the mask would have took a different shape. But the factor is, but the factor here is that is that the is that the uh, is that Tonto spirit animal is a, is apparently a boar. Yes. So the mask basically kind of like chose that shape to reflect that. But yeah, but yes, uh, yes. This cursed Max, this cursed Max, definitely probably pissed himself after after he get, after he got eviscerated by Char. <laughs> yeah, but let's not have that get rid of like his other achievements. It's like his biggest achievement, like, is when he took his two katanas and managed to slice open dragon skin like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. On, on a very technicality here, we have, most importantly, Alexander Dragon, who is pretty much like be, pronounced and known to be the toughest. Has the thickest hide. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Dragon probably has the thickest hide out of, out of the out of the Royals. I'm pretty sure I had John Fall even state that his hide is basically strong, strong as strong as basically steel. <laughs> it's just imagine. I don't know why, but it's just like imagine John Fall be, be like be like see, seeing seeing what Tato Tato D be like. Mmm. Well, that boy definitely has some strength to him, but the cut through steel. Mm, where can I get that mask? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. But yeah, I'm gonna be on. Uh, uh, but yes, on, honestly, I don't know. The saddest part here is is, uh, is that I don't really think that Tonto Tonto even got a. Li Tonto Tonto didn't really get get a good get get a lit get get like a get like an attack off on uh, Char if I remember correctly. I don't think he did. I think I think if he did. I think if Tonto Tonto actually did did actually take a swing take a swing at him, it, it could have gone in one of two ways here. One, Char, Char probably wouldn't have felt it anyways. Or two, or two, Char would have actually probably would have found would have actually gotten another arm chopped off. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah, it's like I'll be honest. I really like Tonto Tonto too. He he's, it's like he's a very simple character to basically act for, but acting as him is basically so funny to do. <laughs> it's 
it's Tonto Tonto's Ta Tonto Tonto is actually one of those few characters I just use my natural speaking voice for, for but I then just do caveman speak. <laughs> Tonto Tonto is greatest. Tonto Tonto is strongest. No one can beat Tonto Tonto. <laughs> now, most people probably would have the biggest question about the mask is, why didn't it basically work? Why didn't it do anything when basically like anyone else put the mask on? Why does it only have to be basically Tonto Tension? It's kind of just with the way how the mask works. Basically, the moment that kind of took up the form of his spirit animal, the mask is now linked to him. As well, as long as basically Tonto Tension is alive, then the mask will always be linked to him. He's the only one who can put it on. You know, I always had the, I always had the thought of that, but I wasn't really 100% sure. Yeah, and it's basically like, uh, it's basically, it's a magic max, so it, it's magic, people, so even though it doesn't make any sense how none of the injuries from basically, like, Tonto Tension basically carry over to basically, like, Tonto Tonto and vice versa, it's magic, people, don't question it. I personally would probably just think of it as a, as just, I was just taunt, I was just taunt, 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 I was just taunt, 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 just give, just giving, just like give, giving a taunt attention, just like a protect, just like a protective, like some kind of protective thing. Yeah, and I feel like that this basically kind of showed a little bit more about like uh, the taunt, taunt, the entity of where some people kind of question how does basically taunt, taunt, uh, taunt, basically view taunt attention. It's like some people theorize that basically he hates him and wants to be in control. Other people basically just say that basically it's like Tonto Tension has trouble keeping him under control and he has to basically make sure make sure that he's in check, even though I've never shown that before. <laughs> it's like I basically mentioned before, and Tonto Tonto even confirmed that Tonto Tension's not aware of Tonto Tonto's existence. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, on the bottom dollar, it's basically Tonto Tonto kind of considers himself basically Tonto Tension's guardian, his protector. Yeah, 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 and it's a, yeah, and this, and it's, yeah, and, 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 and we all know that sometimes guardians will have will have the will have the limits on how, of how much they can actually be a good guardian. Yeah, I mean, basically, Tonto Tonto has no obligation to basically treat anyone else well. <laughs> Tonto Tonto just thinks it just just wants to be just wants to be everyone in a in in a battle of strength. Yeah, and this what? is something that why I feel you, like. What? Oh, sorry. What? Why he does that? Uh, but why he want? Why he wants to do? It? Why he wants to do that? I don't know. Probably to pass the time. Actually, no. It's actually a very simple answer. Due to the fact that basically Tonto Tension basically wants to do everything to basically improve his own intelligence and basically like understand more about magic, Tonto Tonto basically wants to basically become as strong as humanly possible and understand as much as he can about swordsmanship and stuff like that. As basically Tonto Tonto basically essentially has a lot of the opposite qualities as basically Tonto Tension, as pretty much people probably has guessed right now. <laughs> well, yeah. He's pretty, he's pretty quiet. He's pretty quiet, and Tonto Tonto is just loud for one of them. Yeah, Tonto, yeah, Tonto Tonto is very loud. It's like Tonto Tension is like very intelligent, but basically, it's like Tonto Tonto. The reverse of that is he's extremely stupid. <laughs> To 
happened to the point of where he can sometimes confuse himself with his own actions. But yeah, it's like when, when it comes down to basically Tonto Tonto, he's actually been a pretty great addition to basically like Drago's army. He's been being a pretty heavy hitter um, and having some pretty good speed under his belt. Um, him having the incredible ability to attack with two swords, let's not forget that. Mm hmm. Also, he's my resident bleeder. Yep. And he does a pretty like, damn good job at it. Yeah. It's like Tonto's basically strength as well as his ability to basically inflict a lot of bleeding in one sitting. Basically, it's made it so that Tonto Tonto's been capable of, like, carving people up like jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> Tonto Tension, we basically know not as much about him than we do Tonto Tonto, weirdly enough. <laughs> do -do -do. Yeah, yeah. Mostly because, like, Tension's been basically used less, but that's no problem. Do -do -do. There, there's always the future. Mm-hmm. Also, Tonto Tension's basically like fucking, fucking like a P first appearance is basically kind of like was a really weird one. Tonto Tension made his first appearance within basically like a prologue, mm -hmm. which we're not really sure where it took place in the timeline, and it happened inside basically like the Lee, uh, the the Leho family, like royal family, like fucking garden. It's like. Yeah, that was a really weird weird way for him to basically make his first introduction for good old Tonto Tension. <laughs> it's like it was like it was it, okay, we could at least say that it was po it was, that it was definitely after the we could probably definitely say that it was most mo most likely after the after the quarry shenanigans. Oh. oh, oh, fuck! I actually forgot. A lot of people wanted to know Nana's backstories. Nana? Oh my! Brenda's bird. <laughs> they want to Why know about the fucking Nana? bird's backstories. Why y'all want to know a Nana? Why y'all? Why y'all want to know a Nana a backstory? Um. Okay. Here's Nana's backstory. He was hatched from an egg. And then, it became a baby bird. And then later, it was given to Brenda as her bird companion. And that is the story of Nana. <laughs> the end. Uh, just fucking like uh, Neo, just when we upload this session, he just basically just puts on screen basically the end. <laughs> <laughs> Just written in the MS Paint. <laughs> <laughs> or even better, I just write Finn. No, Wing. <laughs> mm -hmm.
You know what? I think I know exactly which character's backstory I'm going to do next. <laughs> Most, m m mostly because it's kind of weird that I haven't done their backstories yet. Uh, the fucking Ford's retainers. <laughs> ah, yes, the Ford. Ah, yes, Ford's retainers. We haven't heard jack shit about their backstories. <laughs> Honestly, when it comes down to both of their personalities, you guys are pretty much aware of what her personalities, uh, what their personalities are like. Catherine being basically the hopeless romantic who basically has been cheated on by a bunch of guys that she's dated throughout the years. Oh fuck! I and is so now very her. And, is, and is now very paranoid. <laughs> Slowly puts Tonto Tonto slash Tonto attention near Catherine. Anyways. <laughs> There's I'm, the ship. I, <laughs> I mean, Catherine currently has her eyes on Hanu. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with being a furry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Fucking yip me, fucking fools. I'll fucking take your heat seasons. Fuck it. <laughs> Well, as, as long as I don't get some sort of weird bee skin like sexual diseases. <laughs> you are a virgin, right, Hanu? Um, yes, 100%. One, one <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up now. <laughs> I don't like that tone. <laughs> I don't like that tone. That sounds very sus. It's like, oh, it's like basically Ursa's like, he's lying. <laughs> uh, uh, I just imagine she, she goes like, Why are you always lying? Why you have to be so rude? Don't you know that we're humans too? I mean, even though this isn't my voice. <laughs> yeah, for some... Yeah, for some reason, uh, basically a slow gay Ursula black girl voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she does kind of, I mean, she does look black. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't actually actually seem to not know this or not aware of this, but I understand because Ursula speaks so little in this series. <laughs> As, as not due to the lack of screen time, she actually has a decent amount of it, but she barely speaks. <laughs> Honestly, I think she spoke less than basically Madeline has, and her entire thing's that she's supposed to be silent. I mean to be I mean to be honest, I think Madeline went went through like several Went through a lot of sessions just being the silent fucker. <laughs> until very recently, and until, until very until until re until recent sessions of of her, of her with her father. Yeah, it's like basically Wamba Chain counted how many sessions it took. Basically, Madeline. Madeline to speak for the first time, it was a total of like thirty three. Yeah, that's a lot. Wow. She was pretty damn quiet. 
I mean, with inside her most recent appearances, it's like her talk count has increased a bit, but yeah. <laughs> That's besides the point. Do do do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have Catherine here. Catherine. She's indeed basically like an interesting character indeed, because here's actually a little fun fact. Catherine was actually like was actually like one of the first characters I made when I was basically first making this series. I think that she was basically the basically I think she was basically like the second or third character I made, the first one being Conan and the second character I made being Julius. No oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's like, when it came down to basically characters, it's like Julius and Conan, uh, they, they basically, like, they, they were kind of like special cases and everything of where the, their entire character creation sort of basically, like, went in a very weird way. As, I mean, here's no. a fun fact. Julius was actually originally supposed to be a woman. <laughs> All right. I think I remember you saying this before. Uh, Conan wasn't originally supposed to be a caster. Um, he was actually just supposed to basically be, be like, a melee. <laughs> but then I realized that basically it's like, well, then again, Alexander's a melee. Marine's a melee. I don't think they need a third melee. I'm gonna make him a caster instead. <laughs> melee, melee, caster. Perfect balance. But, but but there was the fact that basically Neil didn't figure out he was supposed to be a caster. So he didn't make him one inside the first arc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Catherine basically is a very interesting character. Due to the fact that... Oh, I'll honest, be 100% honest. Inside the first series, she fucking sucked. <laughs> she was pretty damn weak. I mean, when your only spell is basically fire, and basically, and then no one gets the bright idea to get her more spells when they were available, I guess that's pretty apt. But also, she got pretty fucking stat screwed. She had some of the worst growths out of any character in the series. As there were some times when she leveled up and she didn't get a point in any of her stats. Yikes. So yeah, Kat Catherine kind of just basically like, um... She she was a per, she was a pretty weak unit with honestly had the worst personal skill in the game. It's like yeah, it was honestly kind of ridiculous how kind of pathetic basically like Catherine was originally, <laughs> but I did end up basically like giving her the love and intention that she basically deserved. I basically ended up basically making her strong, stronger, and now she's no longer basically a joke. Do -do -do. Yay. Yay. In terms of notable moments and stuff like that for Catherine, she honestly doesn't really have a lot, and which is kind of sad considering that she's a retainer. I mean, there was one notable mo. I mean, there was like there was like one moment until that thing until that moment was completely snuffed out. But thanks to thanks to thanks to, thanks to me. <laughs> yeah, source of flame basically just like making Julius and Hawk immune to basically lightning and fire magic. <laughs> uh, but but Watcher was at least a good sport about it. <laughs> He, he, admitted, yeah, he, like... he, he, admitted he forgot about that. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think, honestly, I think that I think that I think his reaction was I think I think he was re his reaction was just was 
Aha! I have done it! I have... Look, look that's so funny. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Well, I guess I... Well, uh... Hmm. I think I'll lose it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good game there. Yeah. Like, Taffrin, she, she was not really well built, and that, that was kind of completely on me. The, the fact that she was basically, like, one of the first units I made didn't really help. She didn't really go through any, basically, revisions like some of the other characters, so she just sort of remained the same. And then Watcher yeah. kind of admittedly ignored her for a while, so he didn't really update her or got her anything else. I mean... She only had one spell until basically Watcher just decided, Hey, uh, hey, comrade, you think you can change this like a fucking fire spell to something? And then her fucking main weapon was born. The Electro Loot Instrument of Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how how we're supposed to feel about how a character's ultimate weapon is a loot. <laughs> a loot that is this powerful, no less. Look, if look if Catherine really wants instrument lessons, then she then she then she then she, then she can just go to go to Valentine. Honestly, his loot. Honestly, his, honestly, his flute, honestly, his flute lessons are probably godlike. <laughs> Fuck that! I hate children. <laughs> and that's actually a true fact. Catherine actually doesn't like children. Ah. Uh. Oh, it's like I wrote down in basically like uh, the goop box that she basically views like uh, characters like Beverly and Tiffany as nuisances. <laughs> Oh, which might be you. A, oh. which might be a little bit awkward considering that Hanu actually really likes children. <laughs> yes. What were you about to say? I was just gonna ask how what would she view Valentine? I don't know if you're a boy or a girl. <laughs> Perfect answer. You look so fucking androgynous. Also, which kind of leads to a fun fact that I found out that basically Catherine's original face claim was actually a dude. <laughs> dude looked like a fucking dude, but yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Drago. It's not like you knew either. <laughs> Oh, but oh, 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 but oh, but yeah. Honestly, honestly, I couldn't tell. <laughs> for all I know, for all I know, that for all I know, it was for. If I remember correctly, that 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 first face claim was pretty much like had it. I, honestly, it just makes me think that Kat, it just made me think if Kat, what makes me wonder if Catherine was in, was into chains and whips. Well, the first, well, the first, when the first face claim. I kind of like this one because it kind of basically has the same flair of an old one, but then I like the detail of the leaves because this is now my head cannon. <laughs> that basically that she stuffs basically her dress with leaves to make it look like her boobs are bigger <laughs> and they really are. <laughs> also, we are saying canonically she is flat chested. <laughs> Well, she's not flat-chested, but they're very small. 
And being that the fact that she's be- that she's best friends with Lynn, fucking double D's McGee. <laughs> But she's probably secretly jelly. Um, should I tell them what you did that one time inside the showers? No, 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 no. They do not need to know about that. <laughs> oh, what, um, what, oh, what, what is this you talking about there, Lynn? <laughs> well, when we were inside the shower, she came up behind me and basically groped my... No, 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 come on, let's just go to the backstory. Come on, come on, come on, Sergeant, let's do this. Oh, wow, she's very, oh, wow, she's very, she's very, she's very into it now. <laughs> Actually, I need to bring the one back. There yeah. we go. Yeah, get, yeah, get back in, get back in, get back in line, Lynn. Yeah. Okay, Catherine's turn. Did you? Oh, and also Diesel wants to go out. Okay, Diesel. Oh, I'll, I'll bring you out, Diesel. Come on, Diesel. Diesel. Okay, as we'll now start the Catherine backstory. Do do. Catherine grew up within the capital city of Ophesius. Catherine being born to a noble family, she always dreamed of the day that she will basically meet the love of her life. Something that she's always thought about ever since she was a little girl. Catherine, being the youngest, of six children, she had four sisters and one brother. But the brother's not really important, so let's just to basically ignore him. <laughs> Catherine, throughout the years, kept looking for her one true love. Wanting to find someone that she can be with forever. When she was 10, she found her first crush, a very studious child, who seemed to basically love learning about medicine, creating potions, was also very talented with water magic. This child was Jonathan. Catherine then basically flirted with the young Jonathan, trying to basically get his attention. Jonathan, not really being interested, just decided to walk away. But Catherine kept following him. Jonathan kept on basically trying to lose her, taking turns in separate different alleyways. Even went to basically a market twice, 
trying to basically lose her with inside the crowd. But it seems like that she just kept on gaining on him no matter how how far how far he'll keep on on basically walking. It was at one point that Jonathan just decided to jump into a nearby lake, holding his breath for several hours. Catherine tried looking for the boy, but she couldn't find him. So she lost interest and just went off somewhere else. Catherine kept on walking off, still trying to find her one true love, as she then eventually ran into another young gentleman. He was very tall and handsome, had himself a nice smile, very courageous. This man this boy was Randolph. As it seems that Randolph and his father were visiting Ophesius in terms of business. Catherine's father, the one in charge of the, Ophesi uh, the kingdom of Ophesius, the largest lumber mill, spoke with the man, saying that they needed wood, trying to build some new buildings back at Pisces. As the two adults were talking, Catherine, currently now a 12-year-old girl, came up to Randolph and immediately started flirting with him. Randolph, being pretty shy at this point, didn't know what to do, so he just ignored her the entire time, not saying anything, pretending that she didn't exist. As Catherine, at some point, started to get upset. She then picked up a stick and hit Randolph in the head with it. This did not really fly well with basically Randolph's father and her father. Craft... Catherine then regretted her actions that night. Catherine, throughout the years, kept trying to basically find her true love. But while she was doing that, her sisters would constantly get multiple men proposing to them, trying to gain their affection and their attention. Catherine was extremely jealous that the fact that her sisters kept getting so much attention and how no boys were basically interested in her. However, 
One day, a young man actually came up to Catherine. And asked her out on a date. This news shocked Catherine so much that she actually basically started crying. The young man was very confused. But he just decided to go with it anyway. Catherine and the young man went out on their date, having themselves a nice time, laughing, walking, being playful with each other. The young man then basically told Catherine that he would love to basically talk to her again tomorrow. Or go out another date. Whatever she would perform. Catherine said yes in a heartbeat. The next day, Catherine met with the same boy. The next day they met again. The day after that, they met once more. This very soon basically became a daily thing. Lasted for about a year. Until one day, the boy just disappeared without a trace. Catherine was confused. Even on days he was sick, he even came to visit her. At this point, Catherine started to fear that he might have gone into a horrible accident, or might have died, or worse. For a few days, Catherine just kept on going to the same place, hoping that he would basically be there. She repeated the process, kept on going for about a month. Catherine then started to cry in the middle of the place that they always met together. After this heartbreak, Catherine needed to do something, need to keep her mind off the pain. So she started practicing magic. She kept practicing and practicing, not out of an interest of becoming a good mage, just an outlet for her frustration. She became very adept in using thunder and fire magic, as the thunder was fueled by her internal anger for having this happiness that she's basically been so accustomed to taken away from her, and the fire for basically the burning passion that she hopes that she'll see him once again. Though, it seems like that there was something that was always holding her back. 
something that kept basically her from basically going, taking her magic to the next level. Originally, it was just an outlet, but soon it became an actual interest. As it seems that her magical prowess got herself recognized by the king of Ophesius, which was quite a shock to her. The king then told her that if he was if she was capable of keep on training, she'll allow her into their army as a as a junior recruit. Catherine then tried to put a lot of attention into her magic, trying to basically take it to the next level. However, she still felt that there was some sort of roadblock, something that was keeping her from doing it. As not too long afterwards, another handsome young man came up to her and asked her out on a date. Catherine pretty much had no reason to say no. Honestly, she sort of basically forgotten about the guy guy at this point all of her training pretty much wiping him from his from her memory so she basically decided to just go out on his date Catherine had a very nice day with the man not too long afterwards, he asked her out again, and then again, and then asked him if he wanted if they wanted to be something official. Catherine said yes, getting her first boyfriend. However, this happiness would not remain long, as. A week after that they were together, another woman came up to Catherine. As she then slapped her, Catherine basically went, Ah! What the fuck? Why did you do that? How dare you basically steal my boyfriend away from me? What the fuck are you talking about? We've been dating for like, we've been dating for like a week. Wait a second, you're dating him as well? Wait, what? As it seems that basically that Catherine's new boyfriend was a bit of a player. As it turns out that he was dating 15 other women. Catherine then basically charged into basically the man's house. As he basically did they had just a clever little quip, basically just saying, Hey, date night's not until not until until tomorrow. As she then basically started bombarding him with lightning bolts. <laughs> After the carnage subsided. Diesel, 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 diesel. What are you doing, diesel?
Okay, it seems like he's also not doing anything. He's but waddling. Yeah. Okay, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, I okay. was just finishing okay. off my snack. I will continue now. Do the with the story. Okay. Yes. Yes. As Catherine then bombarded him with lightning bolts. As she was not playing dumb at the fact that she that she knew what he was doing. Not too long afterwards, Catherine had herself another boyfriend. But then it turns out that this guy already had a girlfriend as well. After that, Catherine got herself a third boyfriend. But this one then cheated on her a week later. Catherine then got, her, got herself a fourth boyfriend. This one probably the worst because it turns out this guy was actually married. She then got herself a fifth boyfriend. Which turned into an even bigger red flag because this one was married with children. The fuck? As it seems like that any other relationship that Catherine got it in afterwards basically made, made, ended up with basically her boyfriend basically cheating on her or basically already having one and just basically using her as like a side thing. It was at this point that basically Catherine then thought to herself, is this just what my life is going to be now? But she had no time to basically dwell on those thoughts. As by the time she became 17, The king basically recognized her skills and decided to give her a promotion with inside the army. He was not sure what position to give her at this point, but he thought there would be a fairly high one. She, he was thinking, like, somewhere around the level of being basically, like, a captain. Maybe even, maybe even being basically a major general, as she has definitely shown, shown the abilities for it. However... It was at some point that it seems that things all went south as the two people that were originally going to be Prince Ford's retainers suddenly decided to resign. As Jonathan then walked out the room, Catherine basically thought to herself, hmm, that guy seems familiar. Don't know where to. <laughs> As it seems that Catherine was then all of a suddenly asked by the king if she would become one of Prince Ford's retainers. As she then accepted the offer, and then when first meeting Ford immediately basically flirted with him, he turned it turned her down lightly.
It was at that moment that she also met who will grow to become one of her best friends, Lynn. As for the mysterious man, that good old Catherine was with, he was much closer than she originally thought. Much, much closer indeed. Well, I'm gonna keep his identity hidden from the audience and the players, so yeah. <laughs> You sneaky little. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, so, gi I'll so, give you guys. I'll give you guys at least one hint. You haven't recruited them yet. Okay. Are we or talking about this you? guy? Are we talking about this guy? Are we talking about the guy that that suddenly disappeared out of sight from Catherine? The guy who she basically was going on dates with for basically like a fucking year, uh, who then mysteriously disappeared without a trace. <laughs> It's just yeah, like that's who I was talking to. It was just, it was like a, it was like poof. <laughs> Be like poof, gone, out of existence. Where the fuck did she? Where the fuck did he go? Might have wrote down something inside the chat, but let's not show that to the audience. Of course. Of course. Because that would be spoilers, and we don't like spo we don't like spoiling people. But yes. But yes, huh? But yes. Sheesh, Catherine, you fucking get. <laughs> you got that short end of a stick after your foot, after your foot, after your foot, after your. After the first person you loved. Well, second, but. Well, actually, no, third. My mistake. Though I will say, though I will say, the fourth one. Though, though I will say, the fourth one is just kind of funny because 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 it's her. It was gonna. It was her first boyfriend. Be, and, and the and the and the third boy was just like. He was the uh, Diesel was trying to dig in the garbage. Oh. Had to stop them. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, Catherine, um she's a caster. <laughs> uh, yep. Um her, her legs her, 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 her legs are pretty much broken. <laughs> what kind of legs are we talking? We call we're talking about in the speed department. <laughs> She's not good at good at the speed department. And I remember her having like actually really well avoided. <laughs> uh, she yeah, it's like do do 
Yeah, so Capron was pretty damn slow. Uh, which is kind of weird, since basically Ophasius' biggest, like, thing is the fact that they're really fast. <laughs> then again, honestly, I feel like that in terms of speed, I handled it not really well inside the first game. I kind of gave too many characters too much speed. Just a little bit, probably. Yeah, I might, I might just rebalance basically some of the units. It's like, uh, maybe I didn't do the math correctly when I decided to basically buff their stats a little bit. All right, but yeah, that's the. That's the story. That's the story of Catherine. That's the story of Catherine. I, I honestly, I would probably say that, like, I want to say that I like Catherine and everything, but then again, it's like she's hasn't had a lot of focus. It's like we we do know a lot about her personality she does appear in everything but she's never done anything that important so yeah hopefully in the future we can give Catherine more attention here's hoping e e As I know who I'm going to do the backstory of next. As it's time for us to go ahead and do the backstory of the best character ever created. Hey, everyone. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always smiling. <laughs> Even when I'm in severe pain. I can't express negative emotions. <laughs> I want to hear this dude's backstory <laughs> when we get to the Sobers Royals. <laughs> they don't have any backstories. Adger, here, here you go. Here's Silas's backstory. Think of luck from Black Clover. There you go. That's his backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, that is sad. Well, luck, but not as sad. It's like, um, his mother, his mother didn't have any problems with the fact that he couldn't express any negative emotions, so yeah, that's pretty much the only difference there. <laughs> she just thought that she was, he was just a really happy child. So I guess could say his parents were kind of idiots that they didn't realize that him not being able to express any negative emotions was off but ends. <laughs> but yeah um gonna talk about Edna <laughs> alrighty I, I guess the punchy girl Yes, I'm here to punch. Also, a lot of people have commented how weird her proportions are. And you know, now that I look at them, it's like, yeah, they, they are kind of odd. I think it might be the armor. It kind of basically makes her look top-heavy. A little, yeah. I mean, I guess I can see it. Also, I just noticed that she has really thick thighs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've noticed it. I just decided not to. I just decided not to say anything about it. Oh, okay. So you never know this. <laughs> Look, you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
come at me, brah. You don't even know where I live. Get over, get over here so we can box with minions. <laughs> no, no, let's buy some soccer boppers, then we'll box. <laughs> sock and boppers, sock and boppers. More fun than a pillow fight. <laughs> That was oh, actually worst. something that, that me and my brothers did one day for, like, no reason. When, when I'm pretty sure my brother Chris was, like, uh, it, like in his last year of high school. <laughs> it's like we just decide no reason one day to just buy some soccer boppers. <laughs> and we just recorded ourselves just basically just soccer boppering each other. <laughs> <laughs> The most randomest thing we've ever done. <laughs> Honestly, I think the second most random thing I've ever done was like basically that one that one session for like no reason at all. I just decided hyping up Omid for no fucking reason. <laughs> and suddenly it became a meme. <laughs> It's like, honestly, I still don't know why I did that. <laughs> why I had the character start hyping up Omid. <laughs> A character who didn't do anything up to that point. <laughs> I even had it so that Omid was even confused. <laughs> uh. But yeah, as we're now going to go ahead and talk about... The backstory of Edna. Edna grew up with inside a city. What city? I don't remember. I What? You expect me to remember where I was born? I don't think you can expect to remember where you were born. But yes, I was born inside a city. And when I was basically a young girl, I knew that there was one thing I've always wanted to do. Become an interior designer. I've always had passions for interior design as well as landscaping. I would stay up countless nights wondering to myself, hmm, is this, off, is this off center? As well as painting basically my, my parents' house all day, every day, different colors, they were not too happy when I did that. My mother punished me very strictly. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to talk about that stuff. But yes, and then later, I basically then started doing landscaping. I then lift rocks. And then tossed rocks, and then I lift trees and de-rooted trees and then I got yelled because I did that because I threw them at our neighbor's house. I had nothing against that, our neighbors. They were very nice people. They were very understanding about the tree basically inside their living room. But yes, it was then, later that, later that day, 
I then basically discovered something amazing. Something that I don't think anyone has ever discovered was a thing before. I discovered... A shield! I know, an amazing discovery! <laughs> I was basically entranced by this shield thing. It was at that point I grabbed the shield and threw it. And I broke a window. My parents were not very happy about that. Because it was our window. Also, I think I hit my grandpa or something. I don't remember. The events are very hazy. <laughs> but yes, after that, I then basically ran like nobody's business for a bit. Then my mother catched me. She was not very happy. Strict discipline then ensued. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to say that. Onward on my backstory! But yes, it was then at that point. I then discovered I wanted to take my landscaping and interior decorating to the next level. But it seems that my parents were afraid of that. As my father basically decided to basically make a deal with me. If, he, if I could knock him off his feet, then I can basically do whatever I want with the house. My father was basically a proud general of the Piscean army. He is basically was known as the immovable captain. Being able to strike down many foes without either of them knocking them off his feet. It was at that point that I then punched him in the gut and he immediately keeled over like an old man who got winded fl climbing up a bunch of stairs. My father was extremely impressed as well in a lot of pain. He was not aware that I had this much hidden strength. I mean, if you even saw me basically lift up those trees and throw those rocks, I thought that would be really hard to miss. <laughs> but apparently he did. It was at that point that my father then decided to took it took it among himself to then train me in things. He then told me to basically go outside and punch a tree for basically about half an hour. I don't know why punching a tree is basically a acceptable exercise, but I didn't question it. I sat there and punched that tree. I punched it real good. And then I realized I really like punching things. But yes, I then realized something even more. I realized when you punch things, your fists hurt. I know, it was very strange. So, I just punched the tree some more. Maybe it would have made my knuckles better. Several hours later, I realized that this strange red fluid was coming out of my knuckles. My mother then basically saw how my training was doing and then screamed really loudly for some reason. She then basically put these cool white thingies basically around my hand. They were very thin. As, very, as well as kind of restricting. I don't remember what they were called. Bandages. But yes. It was at that moment that my father showed me a very revolutionary new device. Honestly, I don't know where he basically stumbled upon such a thing, but he called it a gauntlet. 
I know, very impressive. It was at that moment. Well, no, not that moment. This was actually happened a week afterwards. Yes, it was a week. Actually, no, I think it was two weeks. Actually, what's today? Um, Monday, Tuesday, three. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. It was a Tuesday. Oh, wait, maybe it was a Sunday. Yes, it was Wednesday. Died end. Went to basically a festival with inside the square of Pisces in their major city. It was at that moment that my father entered me inside a tournament as we will then fight people. The people hosting the tournament told me to choose a weapon. They presented me with an ax. They presented me with a sword. They presented me with a stick for some reason. And then they presented me, I'm not really sure what that was. I don't know, what is that thing? It was a dagger. But no matter, because I didn't need any of those weapons, I decided to use my fists. Most people were laughing at me. They were laughing with joy that the fact that I decided to use my fist, so I couldn't let them down. So during my first fight, I beat my opponent to a bloody pulp. The people were silenced in absolute mesmerization. The next round, I beat the next guy to a bloody pulp. In the next round, I beat him to a bloody pulp. The next round, I beat him in the bloody pulp. Then I beat the referee into a bloody pulp. Then I started to basically beat up the audience. Then I c and then things started to get hazy. I remember punching a lot of people. Then I woke up inside a jail cell. How amazing. And then I basically got to meet a general from the army that wasn't my father. How wonderful. As it seems that I went into some sort of weird thing called a battle high. They were debating what to basically do with me, as my father was basically, like, trying to basically, like, come up with some sort of weird... I, I don't know, I think it was a seance or a ritual. He started waving his hands a lot. I think he was trying to channel the demon or summon water. But yes, it was at that moment that the king- Holy shit, it's the king! Oh my god, why is the- Okay, fuck- uh, Hey, what- who are you- Okay, I'm in control now. Ugh. Seriously, I allowed Tifa to do her backstory and that was honestly successful, but honestly having this idiot do it, that was not a good idea. <sighs> okay. So. Then, what happened was that the king of Pisces came up to Edna and said this to her. You have a very strong power. And that's hidden with inside yourself. All you need to do is learn how to control it. It was at that point that Edna was not sure what he was talking about. She's always sort of lived on the beat of her own drum. As she then just sort of looked at her hands. As it seemed like that she finally seemed to understand. That her actions have consequences. She caused a lot of people a lot of pain. All just due to her own obliviousness. Edna, for the first time, decided to basically take some time and think. What? That's boring! Shut up, you! 
She took some time to think. But I don't want to. She took some time to think. But I don't want to. She took some time to think. But I don't want to. I'll let you have a sparring match with Dean. Ah, yes. I then decided to think. What am I thinking about? Just be quiet. Okay. She then fought, realizing that she didn't want to basically use her great amount of strength to cause people pain. Not the people of her own country. She instead wanted to use her fist to protect them instead. As this may seem like a very basic thought that wouldn't take a lot of thinking, remember that the fact that Edna is really, 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 really dumb. Honestly, she's based her intelligence is basically on the same level as Dean. The two were made for each other. at that point that Edna then accepted that the fact that she needed to learn how to adapt change realize that basically that her way of doing things can sometimes have problems if she admittedly found that the fun. As Edna has a really weird definition of fun. She then became a member of the Piscean Army. As seen that a lot of people basically uh, basically came up to her. Originally shocked due to the fact that basically uh, someone like Edna was joining. Then people became even more shocked when they actually found out that she was Lokian. Because she's not anything like a Lokian. <laughs> Honestly, people just thought that she was Odian or something, because that her personality seems more in line with them. The fact that she was Lokian just made a lot of people confused. Some some people even asked her parents if she was adopted. Which she wasn't. They were also Lokian. Many people in the army were confused. But yes, as Edna then stand by inside the army of Pisces, being a part of a squadron that was underneath Isla. Isla very much respected her strength and saw her worth. So she kept her in very high regards. Though he would admit that she would admit that the fact that her intelligence was something to be desired. But hey, it makes it so that she'll follow orders without without giving any uh, without any complaints.
And that's the backstory of Edna. Yeah, so Edna's backstory is just one of those backstories of where there's not really much to it. So I just decided to have fun with this one. <laughs> Oh, it seems I'm alone in the universe. Hello. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, so I guess Drago left. Mm -hmm. Ah, darn it. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I honestly was having a lot of fun listening to Edna explaining the story because just reasons. It was silly and fun. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people said I had a miss opportunity having Dean explain his backstory, but I'm going to be honest, if I had Dean explain his backstory himself, then it might have took a while. Yeah, and there would be a lot more mention of the truth. <laughs> yeah, there would have been a lot more mention of the truth. <laughs> Yeah, Edna. Um, one, it, she was actually like the among the first units that basically uh, our good good old friend Demonix got. Um, basically, Edna is kind of just an extremely simple unit. Um, she's practically like a female Dean, but it's like the difference between her and Dean is that she's a lot tankier. Um. Her health is indeed lower, but it's like she she is tankier, and she it. I, I can't really say much else because her personality, it, it, like her character, is pretty similar to Dean. But yeah, I guess, due to you, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's like, with, with basically how both Dean and basically, like, Edna are, uh, honestly, yeah, they kind of are just perfect for each other. <laughs> both fairly unintelligent people who basically just, like, uh, who, who just basically just kind of live on off the beat of their own drum. And also their opponent's drum, where the opponent's drum is their head. Yeah, in terms of who's stronger, well, I'm gonna be honest, uh, but it's Dean. <laughs> there, there really is no contest here. Yeah. Trying to argue talking... anything else would just would just not. Yeah, there's no point of arguing anything else. Yeah, that 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 would just kind of be foolish, basically trying to justify that Dean isn't stronger. <laughs> Because, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like if I would have to basically say anything about basically like, uh, about basically like Edna is, she hasn't had nearly as much screen time as Dean, and now that's just more so to the part that, uh, she, she just hasn't been relevant, mostly because, like, Demonix hasn't been here for a couple sessions, like a couple, like a lot of sessions, so, Yeah. Yeah. And at the time it gets it gets kind of like a bit like forgotten. It's like she's not very flashy. She she's just basically like she's punching lady. Um It's it's like she it's like yeah. It's like 
I, I think if anything, I ha I should have basically met, made her kind of stand out a bit more and not be so comparable to Dean. So with inside like the most recent ser most like recent revisions, I I did basically kind of like tried to separate her more from Dean. Um, to how that will basically go, I do not ha have any ideas right now because she's not been used in quite a while. She she has not seen battle in quite a while. <laughs> So yeah, that, that that's just basically uh, Edna. Okay. Now, it's time for me to do the next character. All right, who's coming up next? You know, honestly, it's weird that I haven't done her yet. Xandra. All righty. Old Sandra, her basically being quite, quite the character herself. Um, with her most notable thing being that the fact of how average she is. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um... Xandra's entire thing was basically the fact that, like, when I was rolling her character stats, um, she basically resulted in basically getting, like, two 12s, two 11s, and two 10s, and I was like, hmm, you know, I could increase this character's stats like I do with some of the other ones. Then again, maybe I can make something out of this. <laughs> and that's how Xandra became, uh, came to be. Nice. Also, a little fun fact for people that are perceptive enough. You might actually notice that basically, uh, uh, basically Xandra's face claim is actually basically female Prussia from Italia. And by fun fact, female Pr Prussia from Italia is the same face claim as Nicole from basically, uh, from basically, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> is a little bit of a sign that I tend to use basically character space claims for different characters for different series. <laughs> Also, Xandra is basically a very unique character, as she's the only character who has a fraction with inside her weapon ratings. <laughs> and I, and I didn't see that. Implying I even really looked at her sheet. I was about to say, when have you ever looked at her sheet? <laughs> As Drago, uh, no, not Drago, as Slow is now going to basically take Neo 
grab him by the throat, and break his neck. <laughs> yes, die, little piggy, die! Little pig, little pig. <laughs> can I stop? Can I stop playing dead? No. It's... Okay. And then basically, just as a joke, I pretty much like uh, set all of, all of Sandra's stats except her luck to basically be twenty. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, um, Xantra's entire character. Just, just a massive joke about basically being an average character among basically a bunch of superhumans. Then again, she does use her averageness to great, great effect, so yeah. It's... Well, yeah. Oh no, Dragon, no! And there he goes. Dragon died. Yep. Oh! New no, no, no. no, 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 Drago. New no, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. But yes. Do, do, do. Right. So now, it is time for me to share the backstory of the Zandra. It's a perfect story, so I got very simple as well. Do the do. do Sandra <laughs> grew up was born with inside the city outside the kingdom of Ophesius Xandra, when she was very young, was noted to come from a very average family. She had very average parents who made a very average amount of money, who had a pretty average house, as well as owned very average pets. They weren't really bad when it came down to anything, but they weren't really outstanding or noteworthy either. Some, pay, some people may say that their averageness was honestly an anomaly. One thing could say that be said about Xandra was the factor that she 
didn't want to be average. She, in fact, wanted to stand out. Wanted to basically become something more. Instead of just someone in the background that you just happen to notice on the corner of your eye. Xandra wanted to be something great, something more. So, Sandra, while inside school, decided to participate in many different extracurriculars. Take as many extra classes as possible. However, it seems that she only did pretty average at everything. I mean, her grades weren't bad, but it wasn't anything to basically know, write home about. The absolute definition of a C student. As it seems that Zandra would, no matter what class she would take, she only seemed to just have average scores across the board. This honestly made Sandra pretty upset, as it seems like that no matter what she did, she just couldn't find herself to be good at anything, or outstanding at anything, is the way that she sees it. I was due to basically her willingness to not be average. Her drive to want to be more than just a background character. She wanted to basically make a mark on the world. But she thinks to herself, how can she do this? when she can't really do anything that really matters or feels like it's noteworthy. Later on, she then basically found out that over at Ephesius, it seemed that the army was looking for new recruits and invited people to come. See their efforts, see their best version of themselves. A fight, an audience, the royal fam family. It was at that moment that Sandra then decided to train with the troops of the Royal Army to see what she was capable of. And again, it 
seemed like that she was pretty much average at it all. She tried swords, but she was pretty average at that. She tried lances, but was pretty average at that. She tried axes, but was pretty average at that as well. It seems like that no matter what she tried, she just wasn't really good at anything. Even though she was good at stuff, it's just that she didn't want to be average at them. But it seems like that, that was the only thing that she was fixated on. Wanting to basically be grand at something. But it doesn't seem like that she really has that potential that she's really looking for. Something that she just keeps yearning for, but doesn't think she's capable of achieving. Xandra pretty much has given up, as she didn't really feel like that she would ever basically amount to anything, would never be good at anything, grand at anything. Until one person once met her on the streets, noticing how sad she was. This person was Sophie. Um, hey, uh, are, are you okay? You look kind of sad. Hmm. Uh, who are you? Uh, never mind, just go away. I, I just want to... <sighs> Hey, um, what got you so glum? You wouldn't understand. You know, a lot of people say that, but, but usually the problem's a lot more simpler than they're, than they're letting on to believe. Aren't you a sweet summer child? Um, would you like me to leave? Eh, fuck it. I have to vent to someone. You see, I just want to basically be good at something. I, I just want to be incredible at something. Look, it's like, I'm just so average. Like, not even me, but my family. It's like, why are we so fucking average? Why don't we stand out at all? Are we just doomed to be boring? I don't want that. Seriously, I want to be interesting. I want to be exciting. I want to be something great. I want to be something grand. But 
But Jesus Christ, it feels like that averageness is just something that's in my blood. Do you know how annoying that is? Um, can't really say. All I can say is keep trying and maybe you'll actually find something you're good at. I mean, some people can go a very long time without finding out what they're good at. Things like this take patience and time. I've already heard that from my mother. You're not you're not saying anything special. You're not being original here. You're just sounding like my mom right now. But she's also pretty average. Yeah, you're not making me feel better. I mean, I was just trying to help. Um, I guess if you want, um, something more up your style, um, uh, I heard that the Arclight Academy are accepting new people. Maybe you could enter among their among their students. Uh, that that could be a thing. Maybe you can find out your true potential there. That's a actually pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah, I think I can do that. Um. Said that in a very weird way. I did? Yeah, you, you did. Like, you sounded like that you were planning on killing someone. What? That, that, that's not how I meant it to come across as. Is that, is that how I came across? Yeah, kinda. Um, yeah, so, uh, thanks. Thanks for listening. And who knows, maybe we'll be friends at some point. Maybe. Bye. Um, but I am, she's already gone. Um, okay. Uh... You know what, I think I'll just go ahead and say hey to my friends. They're probably waiting for me anyway. That was an interaction. <laughs> And then, not too long afterwards, Sandra then went to the Arclight Academy in order to understand what she's meant to do in this world. I know I'll find it here. According to that one girl that I met about a month ago.
What was her name again? Yeah, it doesn't matter. And that is the backstory of Sandra with the Sophie cameo. <laughs> So yes, the age-old backstory of Sandra. Of Sandra the Average. Sandra the Average. So yeah, like I said, that that was the very complex backstory. It's like the entire part, of the entire thing about her backstory was the fact that she's average. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, this is probably going to be the last one of tonight, and again, people, with Hodor's backstory, uh, this is gonna be, get very dark. <laughs> this, this is gonna get pretty dark. One second, one second. And... Okay, there we go. I just wrote down the time that it starts, so I can put uh, uh, I can put an advisory alert here. You good? I, I'm sorry. What did you say? Oh. I uh, someone was talking to me. <laughs> oh, I said I said hold on a sec, and then I went aside to a document and wrote down the current in time. Uh, on said document, so I know when to put an advisory alert in. Oh, hey, Eagle. Go. You get the garbage. I know I don't have to, but I want to. Um, how's your tape? Assuming just being talked to. But yeah, uh, there's going to be an advisory before this starts. If you don't like dark, then skip ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, I, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's all right. Do we do? Yes. So yeah, people. Um. Do do gonna 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 do a disclaimer. Good old Hodoru. Talking about her backstory. Pretty dark one. <laughs> Some people may think I'm being hyperbolic or I'm basically like uh I'm basically making mountains out of molehills, but I will say right now, um yeah. Uh th things are gonna get pretty dark when it comes down to her backstory. Um uh -huh. Does Hogaru have the darkest backstory out of all of the characters? I won't say that, but honestly, it's like your hers can get hers is pretty dark. Um, it's not the worst, but it can get pretty bad. I will I will say right here that this is basically kind of going to be a turning point in terms of basically characters with some pretty dark backstories, as it's like. 
I'm going to say that with Hodoru's, at least that there's basically like a happy ending. <laughs> Some of the characters won't get that. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and pause. Uh, not pause. Uh, go ahead and mute yourself. I'll now <laughs> get right. to Hodoru's backstory. I'll be playing the last march for you. Yeah. Hodoru's childhood is something that she does not like to look back upon, as it holds a lot of bad memories that she would rather not look back upon. Sometimes these memories hurt her, not only mentally, but physically as well. These are just one. Back when she was just but a baby. Hodoru's father, Dai Konrad, immediately thought to himself, A girl? Uh, seriously? This fucking slut gave birth to a girl, as he then slapped his wife, in quotation marks. Hodoru's mother then cried and panicked, apologizing profusely. I'll tell you right now, you whore. The last thing I wanted was a girl. A girl cannot hunt. A girl cannot kill without remorse. A stupid little girl cannot fight in an army. They do not have the same killer instinct as us men have. When I took you as my wife, I said that you will only bear me sons. You've been doing well so far. As he then gestures, to four boys currently sitting quietly not saying a thing
seriously, what am I going to do with a girl? Actually, I know what to do with her. Hmm. Jean Baljean's would probably basically need one of his sons to marry a woman at some point. I guess this could be a nice sparkling chip when she becomes of age. Now, wife, you may now get up now. Do not keep me and, the, and your sons waiting for dinner. But I just gave birth. I lost a lot of... Did I told you to talk back? I said to get back up and make me and my sons dinner. Yes. Right away. <laughs> It was at that point, Dai Kuan Ran then took the baby Hodoru and just tossed her into basically a pile of dirty clothes, not really caring about her safety. Miraculously, she was unharmed. As the years slowly went by, Hodoru was a very quiet, timid girl, only five years old. Her mother was constantly working around the house, constantly doing things, never taking a moment to rest. seemed always very on edge, but she wasn't sure why. And then her father and her brothers, they were always so distant. Her father never acknowledged her existence and only ever brushed her aside. Her brothers would viciously bully her, beat her up, tear her clothes, pull her hair, and her father never seemed concerned about this, as well as her mother. Whenever she would tell her parents about this, her mother would just not say anything, and just keep working as her father would only tell her this. Hmm. I would be disappointed if they were. 
women like you should already know their place in the world at a young age. Honestly, they're doing you a favor. Having you understand what the world's going to be like for you when you grow older. You see there, my daughter. It's very simple. This world is a very unfair place. There's only room for the strong and not the weak. And when it comes down to women like you and your mother, you were born weak. Men, they're born strong. So they are the fighters. They are the strong ones. You are just mere cattle. Ready for the slaughter. In a world that is going to tear you limb from limb. That is why I plan to marry you off. To Sam, a friend of mine. Hmm. Yes. Sean Bajan. A Quarian Warlord, the most brutal one I've ever known. A man that I've respected for many years. He's the absolute example of strength. No mercy. No excuses for failure. He makes examples out of people. Whenever someone makes a mistake, he makes sure that that mistake will never be repeated. A man I've always strived to be. But I've been stuck under control of this small little hovel of a town. I know I can do better than this. But why am I even telling you? You probably don't even understand what I'm saying. You're only like five. But unbeknownst to Dai Kanra, Hodoru did understood him very well. But, Hodoru always remained hopeful, wanting to see the world as more than just how her father described it, trying to find beauty with inside the world, and trying to get her father to see it. There was one time where Hodoru spoke with her mother about how did her and father met? How did they fell in love? Hodoru's mother just said that she doesn't remember it was such a long time ago, obviously trying to touch the question. Hodoru's, um, Hodoru's mother then smiled at her, saying that she knows that you'll basically help somebody one day, that you'll be a very good person, 
nothing like your father or your brothers. That you're going to grow up to be something great. Something helpful. Something useful. And she knows exactly how she can be. As one night, when her father and brothers were out on a hunting trip, Hodoru's mother decided to play a game with Hodoru. She wanted basically Hodoru to go ahead and help untie basically a nice little necklace that mommy had. Mommy couldn't basically reach basically the back of her neck. And her father does not like her taking off this necklace when she uh, when she was around him. But since she isn't around, she thought that she could finally take the necklace off. As the necklace was pretty heavy and sometimes gave her some severe problems in her neck and shoulders. She just wanted to take it off just for a little bit. And then she'll put it back on. She told Hodoru. Hodoru, not wise to what was going on, helped her mother remove the necklace. She remembered it being pretty heavy, very cold, rough. You've seen a lot of the other women with inside the village wearing similar necklaces. As she realizes that a lot of the other women kind of look the same as mom, as if they haven't showered in a while, very dirty have the same looks in her eyes. As it seemed that Hodoru's mother beamed with happiness, smiling wider than she's ever seen her before. I mean, she rarely smiled to begin with. It was at that moment that Hodoru father and her brothers came back Hodoru's father was angry. Furious. As he started to charge up to basically both Hodoru and her mother, Hodoru was terrified, scared even. As Hodoru's mother then took out a wooden shiv that she's been making for who knows how long and stabs it into Hodoru's shoulder, 
She then picked up Hodoru and tossed her at her father. Hodoru's father basically got hit by Hodoru. He then basically tossed her aside and then chased after her mother. then walked outside as she basically saw her mother shot with dozens and dozens of arrows as the men from each of the households slowly congregate to her her still buried alive with her last dying breaths she cursed out her father saying that he's a cruel, selfish man, that you took to me from my family, made me your life against my will, made me have these cursed bastard children that I never even wanted. If you weren't around, I would have drowned them all. And I would have done it with a smile. Odoru was horrified seeing these words come out from her mother's mouth. As Hodoru's mother noticed her at the corner of her eye, I hated you most of all. All you were were basically a needy, crying girl who just constantly needed something from me. It's pathetic how, how basically non-dependable you are. I always had to do everything and you couldn't do anything. You're just useless, 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 useless. You couldn't even basic, you couldn't even basically get those fucking shackles off of me fast enough, you stupid little girl. It was at that point that Hodoru started crying. As something started happening, as Hodoru's eyes started to glow. As the life was basically slowly leaving Hodoru's mother, she realized an apparition that looked very similar to her was standing right in front of her. She didn't know that she was delirious from being near death, but it was at that point the apparition picked up the wooden shiv that she used to stab Hodoru it then crouched down to her level and then stabbed her with the wooden shiv 
in the back of her neck and did it again and again and again and again until her head was disconnected from the rest of her body. As Dai Kanran looked back at Odoru, he saw more apparitions of not only him and his men and Odoru's former mother, as well as the apparitions of fallen people. The husbands of the women that used to live in this village, but they all killed when they took the village for their own. <laughs> what do you know, my daughter? It seems that you really do have that killer instinct. I think I know how you can be useful to me. All we need you to do is realize your full potential. It was at that moment, and then years after, Shen put Hodoru under intense training, wanting to push her to the absolute limits, wanting to break her, wanting her to basically be nothing but a killing machine. But it was due to her good heart that she couldn't. It seems that the apparitions just kind of act on their own. She couldn't control it. And this just made her father furious. Whenever she did not meet his expectations, he would force her to basically do all the house chores. While, wait, while basically wearing several sets of weighted chains. And she was forced to sleep in the basement cold, disease-driven, with rats. Her brothers would constantly use her as a punching bag, as target practice and training, except for one. The youngest of the brothers, Sun Wu. Unlike the rest of his, of the men inside the family, Sun Wu didn't seem to be very violent. In fact, he was pretty shy and pretty self-reserved. Sun Wu came from another woman, the woman that her father married after. They were not blood related, but Hodoru seemed to feel some sort of strange kinship with this boy. However, he was always scared to basically interact with her out of fear of what her, his stepbrothers would do if they saw him with her. It was at that point that Jean Valjean was shown Hodoru, very impressed by her skills. He thought that she would indeed be a suitable wife for his son. 
he then gloated about how much his son is just like how his old man. Brutal. Ruthless. The killing machine. He believes he has not shown mercy to anyone once in his life. Women, children, animals, elderly, they're just all cattle for him to slaughter. Hoduru is scared. Again. The second time in her life where she's felt terrified. Not wanting to basically spend the rest of her life with a man that might even be crueler than her father. Not wanting to have the same fate as her mother. Hodoru snuck out later that night while everyone was asleep. Hodoru went to a waterfall. As she was about to jump, putting an end to her life. In that moment, Hodoru didn't even hesitate. She thought that this was the only thing she could do. There were no other options. Until she heard a voice call out to her, saying not to do it. She was confused. As she then fell down the waterfall, the mysterious stranger jumped after her, managing to catch her before she hit the bottom. However, it seemed that Hodoru did hit her way on her head on the way down. Things basically became a blur for her afterwards. It's the next thing that Hodoru knew. She woke up inside a carriage. Huh? What the? Where am I? Um. Oh. Hello there, fine miss. How are you doing? Uh, oh, hi. Um, who are you? Oh, my name is Tonto Tension. I happen to actually be new in Quarry. Uh, seems like you somehow managed to get into my, into my caravan. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Uh, but yes, um, oh my, you seem hurt. Here, let me help you. As Hodoru just, for an instance, backs off, as all she's ever known is abuse. But she noticed something inside his eyes that she's never seen before. Compassion gentleness, caringness. This is something that Hodor has never seen before from a man. Compassion. Hodoru then quickly 
question what he wanted or what what he wanted from her her brain started to basically fire off several different ideas wondering what this guy wants from her it not really occurring uh, basically occurring to her that he just wanted to help her It was at that moment that Tonto Tension then decided to use some magic on her, healing her wounds. For the first time, she felt like that she wasn't in pain, as that is all she's ever known. This is an all new feeling that she has never felt before. Uh, um, thanks. No problem. I'm Tonto Tension, by the way. Uh, my name's Hotaru. Hotaru, uh, naturally my last name's not important. I guess if you do not wish to speak about that, then okay. Uh, anywhere you want me to drop you off? Or... Actually, do you mind if I just venture out down with you for a bit. I have no idea where else I want to go. Sure, why not? I feel like we can be good friends. As then, his carriage hit a rock. As the mask then basically falls on top of his head. <laughs> Who are you, lady? Huh? Hotaru was then confused. And that is the story of Hotaru. <laughs> so yeah, could you see why I wanted to basically avoid her for so long? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like I said, at least inside her backstory, at least there's a good ending and a silver lining to it. Yeah. And also, a friendly new friend and a silly new friend. Yeah. So, do the do. Yeah, it's basically like, uh, Hotaru, 
pretty messed up shot, I'm not gonna lie. It's Yep. And honestly it kinda it basically it's like there are some characters of where it's even worse. <laughs> Again, it's like I said, at least there was a silver lining and a happy ending. For some characters, they don't even get that. It's like Fergus, he has a pretty dark backstory. But at least that there was a silver lining to it, but then that silver lining kind of got burned down by the royals. Um... Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, the, honestly, yeah, <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, now thinking about it, Fergus probably did have a worse childhood. At least, at least Hodoru's father didn't immediately try to kill him. Or, like, kill her and stuff like that. Do -do. So yeah, um, that's me basically doing backstories again. Um, yeah. hope you people enjoyed. Yes, hope it was informative and entertaining. Yes, yes. I hope that this was an entertaining thing for you people. I actually do like doing these sessions, and I'll basically say, um. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and basically like uh, continue uh, continue for the four minute schedule because that's what we were supposed to do. But uh, life got in the way on my side, so hopefully we can be able to do our tournament tomorrow as per scheduled. So yes, yep. I will say say have a nice day and see you later, Space Cowboys. Bye bye. Slow approved this message. This is a slow approved message. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.